And a lot of people don't know that stem cells are produced in the body every single day. And it has a different function for, it depends on what kind of cell, right? And yep. the stem cell creates itself to be either brain cell, nerve cell, cardiac cell, bone cell, or whatever the case might be. And there's an article that we found, which was a 79 year old lady that uh, had a uh, macular degeneration and it was starting to deteriorate her vision. With macular degeneration, do you see like the white line? Uh, it? No, it just like your, the retina, the central part yes. of your retina is the, is the maculus. And that kind of, you start to see black. It okay. starts to degenerate, it starts to go away and you basically turn to blindness. It's like that black dot that you yeah. see in your vision. And um, she was part of a clinical trial where they inserted a stem cell patch in her retina. And the results were pretty wonderful where she was able to see again in a way. Yeah, she was able to see. Uh, I believe it was for her one eye. Um, but still, that's... So when you're one, one of your eyes is weakened, the other one starts to go blurry as well. But eventually, after the end of this, this procedure, she was actually able to see better than her husband, which her husband just wore glasses and was able to see fine. And, you know, she was able to outperform him on, on vision tests, which is pretty, pretty uh, drastic and interesting because... A lot of times we deal with people in the hospital that have, you know, blindness or some type of blindness and it's usually related to macular de degeneration. And imagine if we could take stem cells and put it in someone's eye and just make them see again. That's like one of our keen senses, our sense of sight. That's what we rely on more than anything else. That Yeah, you're right. And I um, there was a podcast episode with Joe Rogan where he brought Mel Gibson on. And it was a couple, it was two doctors, um, both from Panama City, where they do embryonic stem cell research. So there's two different, two different types of stem cells. There's ones that are created in the bone marrow, and there's also stem cells that are created in the embryonic fluid, right? right? The embryo yeah. itself of a baby. Yeah. And those researchers were in Panama because I think it's illegal in the United States to do that kind of research. Yeah. And they're able to extract stem cells and inject it via IV. Um, one of them was, I think, Mel Gibson's father. He was very weak. He was on his deathbed, basically, supposedly. And they brought him to Panama and they did a few doses of stem cell via IV. And he actually recovered where he was able to walk again after X amount of years. Yeah. A lot of athletes, when they tear their shoulder or their ACL, MCL, they usually go down to like South America and they see the physicians and they get the like stem cell injected into the location of wherever their, their injury is, and they're able to, you know, attach and, and regrow those those ligaments um, for some people. I know, like you said, Joe Rogan's been big on I'm pretty sure Joe Rogan has had stem cells put he into did, his shoulder. He did. Yeah. And I'm sure, I think his mother has as well. I think he flew her down for, I'm not sure what, what it was, but, you know, that guy is in really good shape. You know, I've seen his leg kicks and his body kicks. Dude kicks like a, like a horse. I don't know. Yes, I don't know what stages we are with stem cell research, but I know they started doing them for like some ortho patients for the knees. And the only problem when it comes to America, as you know, is we like making money off people. So if stem cell injections don't make as much profit as doing the regular hip and knees um, orthopedic surgeries, then why should there be a market for it? Right. Yeah. So currently in the United States, stem cells are more like an alternative medicine, I guess you could say. It's not, I haven't seen any stem cell clinics here. And like you said, I think it's illegal to inject stem cells here in America, right? Pretty sure. But people go overseas to do it and it provides some, some benefit. Like the whole, um, remember we talked about before with the whole psilocybin and marijuana controversy where, you know, it's it should be okay. It should be legalized because if it helps like the lower 10% or 5%, you know, why not allow them to do that? Like same with stem cells. If it helps at least like 1% or 5% of the population that are not, being helped with surgery or other medications, and they want to just have them, you know, do it legally. That's the issue that we're facing in America. But just then again, like, like you said before, it's a controversy of, of financial gain, you know, so that's how it is sometimes. And just like with the hospitals, man, we got these people, well, I don't want to talk about patient ratios today, but we're going to save it for next week's episode. But we have these people that get elected for, you know, as stakeholders and part of the, you know, American Hospital and Health Associations, and they don't want nurses to get better ratios because they see that as a, as a net loss. Yeah. And you got these guys in power and they get lobbied into, you know, legislation and they're going to keep us without these safe patient ratios. Yeah. I mean, I'm for safe patient ratios. A lot of people say that it'll take a toll on hospital costs just because some hospitals are, you know, barely, um, making their money back or are barely able to, to survive with their financial gain. But if it increases patient outcomes, 
you know, that's going to lead to less hospitalizations, right? So it's going to save hospital more money. Because I know if someone's get re-hospitalized within a certain amount of, amount of time, I'm pretty sure the hospital is liable for, for their care, if I'm not mistaken. So, I mean, we're down to America. We could, we could do it. We could figure it out. States have been already doing it, California and, and California Washington. California has been doing it for over 14 years. Yeah. It's been 15 now. Right. And they've been fine. They haven't been losing money. And they're, I'm sure their mortality rate decreased and everything. So why can't we do it? Right. I mean, I'm sure some hospitals lost money and had a, had a go bankrupt. But I'm, that happens here all, all the time as well. And not just due to patient ratio, just due to poor management and just poor health out- outcomes for the most part. But you want to go back and stem, stem cells? We Save can. that for later, you know. Mm-hmm. Talk about that forever. Uh, like Matt said before, there's a few different types of stem cells. The one probably we're most familiar with and the ones that we know know the most about are the embryotic ones. Um, they're derived in an embryo that's three to five days old. And those cells are the cells that kind of give life, you know, to, to the fetus and to the baby that, that's born. And those are, those are called pluripotent, pluripotent cells. And they're able to turn into any kind of cell in the body. So nerve tissue, you know, uh, cardiac tissue, muscle tissue, anything. So that's like your, your blank slate. And they also give birth to um, daughter cells that are all, also pluripotent stem cells. So they could create more stem cells. And it's kind of, like we said, the, the, the dry slate of, you know, creation and how we're basically born and how our tissues are, are derived. But now... As as we're adults, we also have adult stem cells in our body that's derived in bone marrow, which gives rise to red blood cells, you know, white blood cells. And before we thought that these stem cells in our bone marrow um, only gave rise to red blood cells and white blood cells. But now we're trying to we're doing more research and we're able to take those cells out and put them into like cardiac tissue or nervous tissue, and those cells are actually able to to regrow themselves. But that's currently currently being done on on animal studies, so it's not safe for human use yet. I don't know where I heard this, but supposedly Loyola, Loyola, they were testing something where they take like this vacuum somehow and they vacuum up these stem cells and they spray it onto like, let's just say a burn, Mm -hmm. burn tissue. And that burn tissue is able to self-regenerate so much better, eliminate less scar and things like that. Yeah, I was actually into a podcast, I want to say a couple weeks ago, and it was about uh, cardiac tissue and, and stem cells. I forgot what it was. It was about a, f- a cardiologist somewhere. I think they're from Washington or Massachusetts. That was that instead of a pacemaker, uh, this guy was able to implant um, stem cells into like um, basically into the heart where the old the old pacemaker was. Because you know how how our heart paces itself. You know the, the, the AV node and all that conductivity. He was able to pace it to place the stem cells by the AV node and they actually took over a conduction. So instead of the patient getting a pacemaker for his rhythmios, those stem cells just took, took charge and they became the pacemaker. Wow. And it actually worked out fine for this individual. And that's pretty crazy. And I listened to a podcast, maybe I want to say within a six month period. So it's something that happened recently. I wish I'd done some more research. I just thought about it right now. But it's very interesting. It's it, pretty cool. That, that is, I, research is amazing. That's why it's like, it, it's so hard to follow up and that's why we're here to let you guys know what's going on and keep you guys up to date. Just like, this patient that had like yesterday the whole mint trial. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a trial that they're saying if you have elevated troponins and you have like a type two MI, which is more related to usually related to sepsis and a supply demand mismatch, they're recommending these patients of having a hemoglobin above ten. And like yesterday, the hemoglobin was nine point one, and we gave a unit of blood and went back to like eleven. And supposedly there's better outcomes with these patients. So they're like in these early, early trials of seeing whether transfusing above 10 is better compared to the regular where we're always like, oh, transfu- transfuse 7 and below. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's actually very interesting. It's, it'll be interesting to see in the next couple of years if that changes. Mm-hmm. You know, we're going to be like, oh, damn, hemoglobin's, you know, 9.8. We should transfuse it compared to, you know, we'll let them slide to, to 7. And, you you know, imagine being like the el- elder nurse, like in your 40s or whatever, and saying, yeah, I remember when we used to transfuse when it's below 7. Now yep. we got to transfuse when it's below 10. And, and you hear those really? nurses sometimes too, mm-hmm. like, oh, like nurses used smoke back in the day and that was okay in the unit. So now we're going to be part of this change or we're going to see how much healthcare has changed in right. the next couple of years. It's very interesting. It's very interesting. And for those that are like still unfamiliar of how stem cells exactly work, this is the way I pictured it in my mind. So imagine living in like a mansion and you got to clean this place up. And imagine having this little ma- magic box where you press a button and a little servant pops up and you tell him, hey, go clean the floor. You press another thing, hey, go wash the dishes, go clean the bathroom. And you keep multiplying these people till you have a whole workforce that's able to clean up this mansion 
for like your party. And that's what happens with these stem cells. Your body produces them and they get assigned a specific role, whether it's a muscle cell and whatever other um, nerve cell, brain cell, whatever you need, whatever your body currently needs, that's what the cells produce for. Yeah, it's like the Mises box. The me- that, that's Morty. exactly what I was thinking about, guys. <laughs> the Mises box. Yeah, another thing they're trying to do nowadays as you know, modern medicine moves on is scientists are actually trying to take regular adult cells like your muscle cells or you know, like your bone cells, things like that, your osteocytes, your myocytes, and they're actually trying to reprogram them to not age and to go back to being stem cells. So kind of like reverse cell aging for the most part. And they've been actually fairly su- successful. They've been able to um, take adult cells and, you know, re-age them or whatever they, the medical term is. And you're actually be able to create them to be the pluripotent cells, which is the, the cell, those cells from birth, the same as the embryonic cells. And they're actually able to take those and implant them into um, an animal's heart and it decreases their heart failure. Wow. An animal. I think it was like a pig, I, I believe, or something like that. But that, that's crazy. They were able to basically cut off aging. You know, they would age backwards. That's imp- that's actually not possible. You can't age backwards, but... Prevent but, it from you know, getting worse. Yeah, I'm not friends from being worse. It literally took the cell and then made it back to its original cell. Wow. You know? I love all this medicine. Sorry for jumping topics here, but one thing that we still have to change is the person's, like, behavior... And things like that, you know, just like you have this patient that comes in for heart failure because he's fluid overloaded, you give him Lasix, you tell him, hey, weigh yourself daily. If it gets above two, call a doctor and he still doesn't do it, comes back for the same thing. And it's like this repetitive cycle where we're spending so much money on healthcare because of people like this. And it's cool developing all these technologies. But when are people going to like take responsibility, man? That's right. the problem, too. Yeah. And we can't keep giving you, you know, these artificial things. Help, help make you better you got to do it on your own sometimes it's, it's like a chop shop man where the, the hospital's like a mechanic shop man and we just what do you need oh this is down okay well we'll put a new cadillac converter in here's an exhaust we'll change the air filter here you go go on your way so the car just gets you know broken down a little bit and that's how i feel our bodies are sometimes man right like we're just not fine-tuning our own body but right. Right. And the last way to get stem cells is through the amniotic fluid. That's also being studied upon, but I guess there are some stem cells in, in the amniotic fluid when, the, when, a, some, when a woman is pregnant. So I'm not sure how you know safe that is to extract, but they do amniocentesis on, on people. So, I mean, I'm sure they extract stem cells with that too. I'm not sure if the, I'm not sure if the amniocentesis does that check, like the stem cell DNA. It's it's able to check the fluid and you're able to yeah. diagnose specific things Just like um, fluid, spinal right? fib- fibula and things like that. Yeah, spinal bifida, yeah. It's very interesting. But yeah, I guess there's stem cells over there. So imagine just, it'll be crazy if like the go- government just takes women and breeds them and then just takes out their amniotic fluids. You know, what what movie did you watch? I have, I have no idea, but I have no idea. But that'd be well, some shit. Imagine like these conspiracies. It'd be insane. Imagine this conspiracy where they talk about like abortion. Like where does that baby go? What if they're keeping that baby alive after and it's under some black market and they're har- harvesting these kids or some crazy, crazy stuff that you see from movies, man. Oh, yeah. I got it from Matrix. The Matrix. I was reading online that they're making a Matrix 4, a fourth one. It's pretty cool, too.